Over the years, Lionel and other O-Gauge manufacturers have made many colorful models in a wide assortment of road names. But even so, they cannot make everything. And so we sometimes need to decorate our own locomotives or rolling stock in our favorite railroad colors. Or maybe we want to rehabilitate the basket case piece and give it new life. Either way, sooner or later, most modelers find themselves with the need to custom paint an item. Hello again, this is Mike with another episode of Toy Train Tips and Tricks. Painting our own train items can be rewarding, but it also creates its own problems. Namely, what do we do about fumes and overspray? The cheapest and easiest option is to paint outdoors on a warm, calm, sunny day. But I find that my summertime schedule is filled with non-train activities like mulching and mowing, growing out and, oh uh, yeah, yeah, hanging out by the pool too. When I do have more time for train activities, including painting, well, let's just say the weather is suboptimal for outdoor painting. But in order to paint indoors, we need a method to contain any overspray or paint particles and to reduce or eliminate, ideally, fumes. The ultimate solution is an indoor spray booth. These units are essentially a box to contain overspray, a fan to eliminate fumes, and a filter to catch stray particles. Ideally, these spray booths are vented to the exterior so that no fumes accumulate in the house. Spray booths can be large, permanent installations, or today there are even some portable booths that will fit inside a small case when not in use. The problem for me is that my work area is in the basement, and our floor plan is such that it's impractical to vet the booth to the outdoors. There simply aren't any convenient windows or vents to send the fumes outside. So what to do? If we limit our spraying to water-based latex paints, there's really no need to vet to the outdoors as long as we can capture the particles of overspray. Solvents are a problem not only because they stink, but they're often flammable and they may also be toxic. Certainly painting a special diesel for your railroad isn't worth blowing up your house or uh, getting cancer. This includes canned spray paints. Do not use these indoors. With water-based paints, we know that the water is not flammable, nor is it toxic, at least we hope. We need only to be concerned with the paint particles themselves, which can be managed with a fan and a filter. So, with inspiration from a number of different YouTubers, I set about the task of making my own cheap but effective spray paint booth, and it worked. This is my new and approved design. My first two designs utilized foam core board and believe it or not, uh, spare cardboard boxes. While these designs worked to contain paint overspray, the moisture from the water vapor eventually broke down the paper materials. This time, I wanted to use something that could stand up to water. My booth uses common household supplies. For ventilation, a common 20x20 20 20 household box fan fits the bill. These can be found at most big box stores in the summertime for less than $25. And when you're not using your fan for painting, you can use it around the house. Again, do not use solvent-based paints with this booth. The flammable solvents can ignite in the presence of the electric motor, and that can ruin your day. My filter is a common 20x20x1 20 by 20 by furnace filter, or if you find a good deal on a 2-inch, that works too. Don't use the cheapest filters you can find. If you can see through your filter media, paint will certainly get through as well. My frame is made from one of my favorite DIY building materials, half-inch PVC pipe. This stuff is like tinker toys for grown-ups. I used four five-foot sections of pipe and eight of these three-way elbows for my frame. First, to accommodate the 20-inch furnace filter, I cut four pipe pieces down to 20 inches. Next, I wanted the height of my booth to more or less match the box fan, so I cut four pieces to 18 and a half inches each. The elbows add three quarter inch to each end, making 20 inches total. Then I assembled my front and rear squares by pressing the cut pieces and elbows together. 20 inches for the horizontal pieces, 18 and a half inches for the vertical. I found the pieces stayed together just fine without using any glue. 
Measuring out my workspace front to back, I needed to leave space for the fan, as well as a few inches behind the fan for ventilation. I then cut my final four pieces at 20 inches each and pressed them together with the elbows. You may choose to go longer or shorter depending on your individual workspace. Before adding my outer wrap, I tied a length of 18 gauge wire across the top. This will allow me to hang some items for painting instead of having them sit on a platform. My outer covering is made from one mil plastic drop cloth. Removing the drop cloth from the package, I measured out the dimension of my booth and then cut it from the rest of the package. I'll use the rest for another project. I used Loctite vinyl and plastic adhesive to secure the drop cloth to the frame. Rubber cement, super glue, and some other similar products may work as well. I started by adding glue to one edge, then placing the drop cloth. Then I glued the other three sides and pulled the drop cloth tightly and pressed it into the glue. Make sure you have a good seal on all the edges, especially the side closest to the fan. Then I rotated my frame 90 degrees and repeated the process on the other three sides. After gluing all four sides, I cut off excess plastic. Then I used strips of duct tape to secure the furnace filter to the back of the frame. I used more tape to seal any gaps around the edge. Make sure the filter is oriented for the proper direction of airflow. There's usually an arrow indicator on the frame. And there it is, a simple but effective, lightweight and inexpensive spray booth for water-based paints. As far as airbrush equipment is concerned, I use two different airbrushes. One is a basic Badger single action sprayer. Single action means the paint flow is either on or off. Think of it like a spray can. I tend to use this for primer coats and for projects where I don't need a perfect finish. My wife bought me an Iwata Neo Double Action Kit for Christmas last year, and this has become my everyday airbrush. Double action means you can control not only the on and off of the paint, but also the mixture of paint and air while you paint. In theory, if your hand is steady enough, you could freehand pinstripes with this brush. My hands are not nearly steady enough to try this. Masking tape is my best friend. And as far as the painting process itself is concerned, you can check out a number of great YouTubers who specialize in painting models. They have lots of great tips for which paints to use and proper techniques. For my part, I'm still learning and my technique is not particularly great, so I won't claim to be any kind of expert on this. But honestly, for most of our hobby projects, we don't need a professional looking finish. So just about any airbrush and any water-based paint will work. In a later video, I will walk us through my complete customization process from paint to custom decals. And now that I have my new spray booth together, I can start to tackle some of these projects. For now, we have a way to paint indoors this winter without getting paint all over the house. Once again, do not use this booth with solvent-based paints. If you must use this type of product, you need to invest in a proper spree booth with external ventilation. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I've enjoyed making it, and if so, please like it, subscribe, and share with your friends and neighbors. And until next time, decorate your favorite trains or rehab your old ones, but most of all, keep the trains running, and we'll catch you next time on Toy Train Tips and Tricks.